Okay, we are there. Hi, my name is Mandy and I'm with COVID Recovery Iowa, which is a free virtual peer-to-peer -peer counseling support program. And I have with me today, Dr. Getch, and we are very appreciative of him taking his time to speak with us today about the pandemic, vaccinations, and what's going on in the ER. <laughs> so first of all, we'll start with, I know you got your vaccination. So if you could just speak to a little bit about that and tell yeah, us what so, it was like and prepare so us. So I was, I was really excited to, uh, to, to get the vaccine. So uh, I'm an ER physician and I've treated well over 800 patients with COVID uh, since March. So every day I feel like that I go to work, I'm kind of risking my life uh, getting sick. And so the vaccine, uh, when it you know, came out that it was gonna be available in November, I was really excited um, that, uh, you know, finally was here and we would get some protection. And so I signed up, I was actually the sixth person in our hospital to get the vaccine. And um, yeah, I went and got it a couple weeks ago, about uh, three weeks ago. And um, basically, um, it was a piece of cake. No side effects. Didn't have any issues with it. Um, arm wasn't even sore. They say that some people get a sore arm from the vaccine, but didn't have any issues at all uh, and feel great. So I'll get the booster here uh, this coming week. And uh, about a week after that, I should have full immunity, which is like 95%. So that's really good. So huge stress relief to you, your family, your coworkers, I imagine. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, about half of our physicians in our group have gotten sick with COVID. So um, our hospital uh, has treated probably more patients with COVID than just about any other hospital in Iowa. And so what, rightly so, then of course, more providers and more nurses are getting sick. So yeah, everybody's really excited to, to get some protection, those especially that haven't been sick with COVID. So if the opportunity came up for a, a mom or a dad or a, a parent, you would recommend they get it? Absolutely. Um, you know, I would think that um, it's beneficial for everybody to get the vaccine. So, um, you know, looking in the future, I think it's going to happen for everybody. It's just going to take some time. And it's probably going to be um, for a lot of patients uh, closer to the spring or summer when everybody is going to be have the option to be vaccinated. Right now, we're vaccinating um, the patients that are the sickest or have the highest risk. So healthcare workers, um, eventually be teachers, dental hygienists, um, people that work in the general public, um, nursing homes. Um, so eventually it'll be available and absolutely 100% I would recommend that everybody um, get the vaccine. Um, I know uh, my wife is a dental hygienist. She, we're actually on the way to, for her to get her vaccine today. Uh, so she's excited about that. And so uh, I encouraged her to, to get that. And as soon as the, the vaccine is approved for children, I would definitely recommend that both of my boys um, get the vaccine as well. So right now, not approved for kids, correct? Right, um, yeah. The companies, then, yeah, the companies that... Um, that manufacture the vaccine. We have two right now in the U.S. There'll be another uh, two or four in the next uh, couple of months. But the two that are out there um, are studying the vaccine in kids. Um, there's actually a study uh, here in Iowa. Uh, so we should know more uh, and hopefully we'll get approval for children uh, sometime this spring or summer. Awesome. And um, how about people that have already had COVID? Yeah, so the recommendations are that even if a patient's had COVID, um, that they indeed get the vaccine once they're recovered. So, you know, we don't know um, a lot about the immunity after a patient has been infected. And so we think that uh, the antibodies last at least seven to 10 months. Um, one of my colleagues in the ER who was infected with COVID back in March, um, he actually had his antibodies tested last week and he still has plenty of antibodies. So. We, that's 10 months out, so we know it lasts at least that long, but there are ongoing studies to see how long exactly that the natural immunity lasts. Um, and they're saying that patients that have had it, that then get a vaccine, uh, get kind of a boost and added immunity. So it's important for everybody to still get the vaccine even if they've had it. 
Interesting. Good information, because I did not know that before today. So thank you. Um, okay, I'm thinking about you and your boys, and I just want to put this out there before I um, before I forget. Just the added stress for parents uh, as far as trying to decide um, what's what's right for their family, what's safest, um, balancing that mental health and physical health, and trying to make good decisions for your family. It's a lot of stress for parents. So. Um, add add um, work in the ER to that. And I, I just thank you for taking the time to speak to us because you're kind of touching on all kinds of things that are important to parents and the pandemic. And I appreciate you. So thank you. Um, what else do we need to know? What do parents need to know as far as the pandemic and, and, and vaccination? Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, first and foremost, we all need to keep doing the same thing, social distancing. We need to be wearing our masks. You know, I see um, a lot of uh, people that came into the ER over the last month that were out and about traveling for the holidays, visiting family, uh, and they didn't have a mask on. And so now we're seeing them come back with infections. And so I think all of those things, hand washing, good hand hygiene are still, you know, really important. Even if you're vaccinated, the vaccine we know doesn't prevent you from necessarily becoming an asymptomatic carrier. You can still catch COVID, but you're not gonna have the severe symptoms that you would get if you actually had the virus itself. So hopefully it's gonna prevent those severe reactions, those severe complications with the virus um, that we see a lot of people come to the hospital with. Um, so, you know, I think um, all the stuff that we've been doing for the last 10 months, people need to keep doing. Um, it's going to take quite a while for us to finally develop some immunity in the country where we have enough immunity where we're protecting each other. It may take, you know, another year, who knows? Um, so I think like we have to be in this for the long haul and we have to support each other. And I think we need to, uh, as families, support each other and just constantly remind each other to, to protect each other by washing our hands. Or um, I always tell my boys uh, to to cover their costs. I recommend, I tell them to go wash their hands right away. And um, I know for kids, it can be tough, uh, especially in school. They don't always want to keep their mask on, but um, I've tried to, uh, you know, tell my boys that it's very, very important and just constantly remind them to do those things to protect us because kids, uh, for the most part, rarely get really sick with this. But as asymptomatic carriers, they bring it into our homes, into our families, uh, unknowingly, and they're infecting people that are at much higher risk that then can get very sick or get hospitalized. Appreciate that. Um, just your words of wisdom. I, I have so many questions for you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm thinking about um, the hand. What, 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 if, what if I have more questions and I don't have you to ask? What, what do I do as a parent? What if I want more questions answered about the vaccination or anything? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, the cdc.gov uh, website has a lot of really good information, um, pretty much about every aspect of the virus or other viruses uh, that you can think of. So I'd recommend starting there. That's the, the most accurate information that we have uh, real time on the virus. Um, obviously, you can uh, call your primary care doctor, family doctor. They have a wealth of information um, or their nursing staff in their office. Um, I think that's a, a really good resource for, for patients. Um, and you know, there's a lot of good information on the internet as well, uh, but I think I'd stick to the, the peer reviewed scientific evidence, which is mainly on, on the CDC's uh, website. Okay. And if you're struggling with mental health, um, as far as just having to deal with all this, that's what we're here for. So um, we all have to continue to be patient, it sounds like. Um, like Dr. Getch said, it can, it can take quite a while for all this to um, fall into place and, and um, be, be in a healthy place again, where we can get together with friends and family a, a little bit more like it was pre-pandemic. It's going to take a while. Um, so I, and something else I wanted to mention was it sounded like this vaccination will work similar to what I hear about the flu vaccination as far as like decreasing the severity of symptoms, um, right? Isn't that what the flu vaccination, you should get it? Yeah, so the, the flu vaccine, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 
killed or dead the virus um, that you're getting a small dose of, so you build antibodies towards it. This vaccine is actually what we call an mRNA vaccine. So it's like, a, like an email that comes to you and says, hey, cells, add this component to your cells so that um, if you come into contact with this, you build an immune response. Um, and it's kind of like um, basically protecting you from getting really severe symptoms or getting um, sick. So it, they're a little bit different. They're two different types of vaccines, um, but essentially they're giving us protection from, from getting really sick, from more severe symptoms and that kind of thing. Hmm. Awesome. Well, we just have a few minutes left. And so I wanna make sure and give anyone out there that's watching live to have the opportunity to um, ask some questions. We have some statements here. Um, I don't know if you can answer these, but I'll put it out there. Um, if you get the vaccination, do you still have to wear a mask? You did speak to that. Um, it sounds like you should until this is near the end. Is that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, definitely still wear a mask, still do all the social distancing and practice um, good high end hygiene and that kind of thing. You know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, even though you, you get the vaccine, you still could become an asymptomatic carrier. So you could still contract COVID even after getting the vaccine. Uh, it's just that you won't have symptoms. You won't feel sick. Uh, you may not even know you have it uh, and you won't get severely ill. So it's still important to do all those things. That's good info. How about this? I'm not sure if you know this one. Um, physical therapists, would they fall into that first level um, or like a similar category as dental hygienists you were talking about? Yes, I believe they're category 1A. Interesting. Any other questions for Dr. Getch before I let him go today so he can take his wife to get her vaccination? Woohoo! <laughs> I'll give him a few minutes, but um, what else should we know? What else do we need to know, Dr. Getch? Anything else? Um. Just know that, uh, you know, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's hope there that, you know, this has been stressful for, for a lot of people uh, in, our, in our world and that people aren't alone, that we're all struggling with social distancing. We're all struggling with trying to do the right thing. We're all struggling to try and you know, protect our families and protect each other. Um, and it's not easy and it is stressful. And so just know that there are people out there that can help you, uh, like you, Mandy, uh, and, and others, um, you know, that people can talk to, get information, and you know, it's going to be okay. We're, we're going to get there. We just need to keep fighting it and work as a, as a team. You're fantastic, Dr. Getch. Here's one last question. Is the vaccine recommended for children, pregnant, or nursing women? Not for children, pregnant, or nursing women? Right now, the data is not out there. Um, we think it's probably safe in pregnant and nursing women, and um, the, the guidelines haven't really been very clear on that. They're studying that still. Uh, in kids, it's not approved yet, but we're hoping that all those groups will have approval sometime um, this spring or summer. Awesome. And how, how do you think, I think this is based on county, but how this person wants to know how we'll be notified if we can get the vaccine. It's a, it's a county by county type thing, right? Yeah, so um, the counties are the ones that are dispersing the vaccine in certain uh, groups of patients or groups of people. So um, there'll be public ser service announcements. Your family doctor should have information on that um, once it becomes available. Um, I would expect that uh, general population uh, sometime this spring, we should have some word uh, from each county as to when they're gonna vaccinate uh, each population. Excellent. I'm just going to end with our hotline number 1-800-447-1985 if anybody would like to reach out to us for emotional support, mental health assistance during all of this. And thank you again, Dr. Getch. Thanks for your You're time. You're very welcome. Yep. Thank you. Take care and have a good rest of your day. You too.